Okay, I've been in here for uh, an hour at least, uh, dig diligently cleaning away at records, and I look on over to the uh, screen at the front of the garage, and what do I see climbing on the screen? A caterpillar. Hello, Mr. Caterpillar. Oh, he just waved hello at me. I like caterpillars. I think they're cute. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade, and welcome back to Rescue Records. Yes, this is my first episode of Rescue Records in forever. It's been, I think, at least a year. I don't think I've done a Rescue Records episode since my cam my original camera broke, which was over a year ago. So, yes, it's taken me that long to kind of regroup, figure out how I was going to do videos again, and I've figured that out for now. So, so um, some semblance of normalcy, well, has already returned to my channel, but uh, this is another sign of normalcy. I hope to, uh, once again, start bringing you Rescue Records episodes on a semi-regular basis, but uh, to, to make up for the agonizingly long wait, I decided to come back with Rescue Records in a huge way. Uh, yes, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Rescue Records is a uh, series of episodes I do uh, focusing on records that I have rescued from the freebie shelf at House of Records, the local record store in Eugene. Yes, the records that the store doesn't want to buy from people who come in to sell their records. Uh, if the p person doesn't take the records with them, they end up on this shelf right by the front door. And, you know, they're up for grabs. They're freebies. And uh, <clears throat> this episode of Re Rescue Records is going to pose a question to you. And that question is, to what extreme would you go for free records? Uh, and, yes, w would you go through records that were apparently uh, in contact with rat poop? Because I did. Uh, yes, this, is, uh, this episode of Rescue Records could also be called Rat Poop Records. Uh, but, uh, just so you know, um, I never got sick from handling these records, but I handle them very, very carefully. Yes, I started to paw through them there at the store, and uh, uh, Ian, one of the employees, said, uh, careful, Tom, you don't want to... There was rat poop all over those records, and so I decided, okay, I would get a couple of... Uh, a pair of disposable uh, latex gloves, which we actually have uh, in the workplace, in my office, so uh, came back armed with a pair of... Uh, actually, a couple pairs of those. I had a backup pair with me, and uh, a bag that I did not care about uh, keeping after its use uh, containing these, these records. So uh, it's a, a, a hazmat bag, if you will. No, it wasn't a hazmat bag. It was just a regular bag. But uh, anyway, yes, I brought them back home. And uh, as you will see in the, the cutaway footage, the B-roll footage here, I took great care in very thoroughly cleaning every one of these records. The jackets, uh, the sleeves, nearly all the sleeves I dis disposed of, unless they were very unique and... Um, and in good condition and unique to the record. But yes, there were some stains on these records. Uh, they reeked of mildew. And I probably should have worn a f face mask or a dust mask, but I didn't. But then again, uh, as I said, I did not uh, come down with any illnesses as a result of handling these records. So, uh... Okay, so here we are set up in my mother's craft studio. It's actually, it used to be our garage. We basically screened off the garage door, so it's up, and so we have a lot of ventilation in here, because we're going to need ventilation, uh, because there is a lot of mildew on these records, uh, uh, as well as uh, maybe some slight evidence of rat droppings. Uh, I didn't see a whole lot, but you can definitely smell the mildew, and with that mildew smell, as well as the chemicals we'll be using, uh, not that they're super harsh, you need a lot of ventilation. I've got a bottle of Simple Green here uh, that I will actually be cleaning the records with. I think before I do that, though, I will be giving them a light spritz of Clorox, or you can use Lysol. Uh, it is it is safe to use on, uh, you know, surfaces. It's not going to bleach the record uh, jackets. Uh, I've used it before, and it's worked out fine. So yes, going to clean off the mildew. That's what I'm hoping to do is get the mildew, and if there is any bacterial spores from any rat... Uh, remains uh, that'll the Clorox spray will dampen them and then I'll wipe them off and then I'll use the simple green to actually get the dirt and uh, markings off but uh, 
Yeah, I thought I would show some of the record, sleeve, record sleeves before. We've got ZZ Top Eliminator here, and you can definitely see that's not just a uh, uh, ring wear. That is actually, it looks like mildew, kind of almost caked on. Well, I mean, you can kind of see it wipe around with my finger. And you can kind of see, yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, and then we have Highway 61 Revisited. I've got this on CD, but uh, hey, when the records are free, you're kind of stupid to say no, right? Well, <laughs> depending on the circumstances. And then uh, the gentle side of John Coltrane. I have never checked out John Coltrane before. So uh, sorry to give that a try, but yes, I wanted to show you guys the before images, especially uh, of the, the some of the worst records in this lot. You can kind of see. And uh, oh, does the uh, <laughs> that's one thing I did not check. Does the gatefold even open? Okay, let's try this. It's just stuck. There is no evidence of uh, rat poop. Yay. So, uh, a little bit of damage from the uh, stickage, but... Uh, and yes, that's a word, stickage. And then I gave you a brief glance at Highway 61. This is actually one of the not-quite-as-bad-as-I-thought uh, record sleeves. But yes, Eliminator, as I showed you already, rather uh, mildewy. Uh, so, and what I decided to do is I'm going to take the records in the record sleeves out, set them aside, and clean the jackets. Uh, one thing I want to do is, for anything that might be uh, inside, give it a good shake like that, and then just like that. Very light spritzing. I've got shop towels. I was going to use rags, but uh, and, uh, you'd have to clean them and all that. And I don't have any microfiber rags. I just have regular rags. So uh, these shop towels, I think they're actually sold as shop towels, uh, is the brand name. They're softer than your regular average paper towels. So they will work in a pinch such as this. But yes, that already, you can see, that's the mildew off the back side of the ZZ Top sleeve. And, uh, so, already a vast improvement, wouldn't you say? So, yeah. And then with the Simple Green, you don't want to spray it, at least the video that I saw, I saw somebody else, uh, cleaning record jackets with Simple Green. You don't want to spray it directly on the record sleeve, so spray a bit on the uh, paper, on the towel or the rag, whichever you use, and then use that to clean the record sleeve. Oh my, this is working. I can see just with, in the first few seconds here, it's uh, doing well. And something I like to do is the edges. Clean the edges like that as well. Because, yeah, you can see even the edges can be where uh, some of the worst stuff can be. And then to get the back side a good cleaning. And yes, I will be cleaning the records themselves uh, with my record cleaning solution. The picture sleeves, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to give them a good shot. I mean, the, 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 the picture sleeves, most of the picture sleeves are in bad condition. Their, their edges are all torn, uh, uh, split, and so they're not really in super shape. But... Here is the after with ZZ Top's Eliminator. I mean, look at that. A significant improvement in the uh, condition of the sleeve. And you know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to give the edges an, one more extra little cleaning. Because that's where all of the uh, 
where it might like be likely to be sitting against the rat poop or any other possible contaminants they can kind of catch along the edges of the record. So, And let's face it, if you wear, the, wear out the seams a little bit, these records are not going to be uh, in any condition to uh, resell or flip, honestly. I, and, and that's the reason I picked them up. Uh, I was willing to pick them up in their condition is because of the music, not because of any potential resale value. So, and these, uh, the records that have you know actual paper, as opposed to you know the glossy uh, covers. I don't know, you might want to be a little bit more careful with how much uh, Lysol or Clorox you spray on there. You obviously don't want to get them damp. I mean, you're not going to be spraying enough on there to get them damp any, uh, anyway. Just a light misting. Just a little bit more on that one. because they will dry fairly soon. Oh, I forgot to take out the, uh, take out the record sleeve. And record. And this one, obviously, plain paper sleeve. And do the old uh, shakems. To get any possible paper dust or other assorted Junkola out of the uh, thing. Yeah, look at that. I know that might have been a little bit of the ink from the record itself, but as I said, the condition of the record, or mainly the sleeves, the records themselves look to be in pretty darn decent condition. So, a little bit of uh, simple green on the rag, remember. And yeah, I can just see the simple green making a difference on this already. So, yeah, see? And yeah, give the, give the seams a good little run through. And what do you think? You can't really tell a great deal of difference on this one, but. I didn't do. I didn't simple green the backside. Oh, and another thing I've also got on hand. I'll show you in a sec. Yeah. And I just have a uh, disposable grocery bag to put the dirty rags in. Another thing I have on hand is every once in a while you will probably want to clean your hands. Unless you use gloves, we have the disposable gloves. I thought about using those, but I kind of like to uh, have my hands on them. I don't know. Is that weird? Anyway. So that if you're somebody who needs a drink of water every now and then, as I am, before you touch your water glass, you've got clean hands. And I had a, my uh, regular record cleaner uh, solution that I used to uh, give the records a good preliminary cleaning and uh, gave them one, a once-over, each and every record, a once-over with my Spin Clean record washer. So yes, these records are about as clean as they will ever get. Got a lot of mildew off these records. The ink, you know, the, the, the cover art and stuff was not damaged. Uh, I mean... A lot of these records, let's face, let's face it, are in pretty bad condition. Uh, I have not actually... I cleaned the records about a month ago. It's been a month, but I have not taken the time to listen to any of them yet. So I don't know how they're going to play. I'm going to show them all to you in, in their clean state, obviously. I've got them here in my lap. Uh, in approximate order from the worst condition records to the best condition. There were a handful of records that were in really good shape. And there were some others... Unfortunately, the better of the titles that were in pretty crappy shape. And yes, no store would want to buy them in this condition, obviously. But uh, hey, if I can get a couple of good records out of them and maybe use these as placeholders until I can actually buy better condition copies of the records, then why not? 
There were a few records that actually did have rat droppings inside the jackets, and uh, for those I actually uh, did use the uh, Clorox spray and sprayed very lightly inside the jacket. So uh, I cannot imagine I've left anything in there that could get me ill, um, you know, in the uh, going forward. So anyway, uh, the the uh, backstory is over with. So let me show you what I found for with uh, of these rescue records. I got a couple of Who albums. Who's next? As you can see, a huge amount of ring wear on this one. Uh, the records are in. I'm not an expert at grading records, but these are in good. You know, I would I would rate them as good, maybe good minus condition. So hopefully they'll play with no street with no skips and minimal background noise. But you never know. I mean, they were free, so how can you argue? And another Who album, Who Are You? And this one, as you can see, several of these these first few that I'm showing you, uh, I don't know if this is just wear or if these were actually uh, chewed on by little creatures. But I, I can kind of see those look like little tiny tooth marks, don't they? But as I said, I cleaned them very thoroughly. And yeah, this is a question, you know, in, in the comments, feel free. I'm curious to know, would you go as far as I did to get some free records? I, understandably, these would be records you did not yet have in your own collection. Then that's, that's the purpose. That's the thing with me is these are records. If I already had these records... No, I would not go after, you know, uh, run the gauntlet of rat poop to get these records. No. Uh, but and anyway, um, a couple other ones that were in not in great condition. Hopefully they'll play okay. Another big artist, Bob Dylan, uh, freewheeling Bob Dylan. And uh, as you can see, and yeah, some of these jackets were noticeably dirtier when I started. So, uh, I mean, this one, it still got some discoloration and staining, uh, but by and large... They cleaned up pretty nicely. I haven't bothered trying to take this uh, red sticker off there yet. And another Dylan, Highway 61 Revisited. And this was actually... I had already gotten... Yes, this was uh, after my last thrift store run where uh, uh, you saw that I got the CD of Highway 61 Re Revisited for just a dollar at a thrift store. But I figured, hey, the record... It didn't cost me anything, and if it played... What the heck? Well, it didn't cost me anything... Uh, other than the time and labor and uh, expense of the materials, the cleaning products that I used. So, hey. And then another pretty significant artist, and the records are again are not in great condition, John Lennon. I got a double fantasy here with Lennon and Yoko Ono. Never been a huge uh, Lennon fan, so I don't know if I'm even going to keep these records after I. Even if they play okay and I listen to them, maybe I'll keep them, maybe I won't. And Imagine, another um, significant album of his. And I'm going to put them down here, lest the stack topple over while I'm showing them to you. And then uh, the condition of the records, as I kind of noted when I started here, as we're going through this stack, the conditions of the records are slowly getting better and better, and the jackets as well. Uh, Super Tramp. I've got the remastered version of this on CD already, but uh, yes, Breakfast in America is one of my is probably my favorite Super Tramp album. So it's like when you've got a copy available for free, pick it up, why don't you? And then we've got uh, we're getting into some jazz and uh, <laughs> easy listening. Now the story with this one is interesting. Um, this is. The Gentle Side of John Coltrane. Never had any John Coltrane albums or CDs, so I thought, why not uh, give myself a try with him? The funny thing about this one, let me sit this one down. Uh, as I, when I was cleaning the jacket, it was very, very sticky, as you can hear from that. Uh, and yeah, some of the, some, uh, I don't know if you'd call that ring wear or just, you know, uh, yucky stuff on the uh, gatefold. And still feels a little bit, tiny bit sticky to the touch. I mean, I left the gatefold open until these dried completely. So it's not like I cleaned it and closed it with the uh, cleaning product still wet on the inside. Um, but yeah, I thought it was kind of weird. And this was the only record uh, jacket that that happened with, was it stayed kind of sticky and tacky a feeling after I cleaned it. So I don't know, is it the type of paper 
or the finish on the paper that did that. I don't know. But uh, yeah, and, and this is actually a two disc, uh, two record set. So I figure I want to, I've wanted to introduce myself to John Coltrane for a while. And, you know, if it has, if it takes a free record to do it, you know, and if I end up liking John Coltrane, you know, what the heck? Another two record set here, The Coasters, Youngblood. And I assume this is just a uh, Greatest Hits collection. It's a two record set again. And uh, yeah, this one was actually in pretty darn good shape. Uh, so yeah, it's got uh, a lot of uh, very, very popular hits. So yeah, I don't know if this is a Greatest Hits collection or if it might be a live recording. I don't know. But uh, yep, nice gate fold on this one. Pretty cool. And then some more uh, classic uh, R&B doo-wop stuff. The best of Little Anthony and the Imperials. I've always enjoyed Little Anthony and the Imperials. I have... Or do I have a CD? Maybe I don't. I thought I did. But uh, yeah, I, I've obviously got several of their songs on compilations and whatnot. But uh, I got Tears on My Pillow. Um, Shimmy Shimmy Coco Bop. It's a great song. And uh, Going Out of My Head. Yes, that's one of their best hits. But yeah, this is a Rhino Records release. So yeah, nice, nice write-up on the back here. Just gobs and gobs of stuff to read. But uh, yeah, that one was uh, one of my favorite scores, I think, from that set. And uh, and we have yet more do up The Drifters. Uh, All-time greatest hits and more. 59 to 65. And is, was this a Rhino? No, this was an Atlantic release. So I guess uh, an equally extensive write-up on the gatefold of this one. And uh, yeah, lots of their big, big, big hits on here. And now these next two, I had these on CD a while ago until I thinned out my compilations um, I had nearly all the songs that were on this series I had on other compilations, so these were kind of redundant. And I had, I believe it was six volumes, uh, the first six volumes, and I don't know how many volumes were ult ultimately in this series, but uh, in that the collection of Rat Poop Records were the first two volumes of Vintage Music. This is a uh, release on the MCA label. So yeah, it's got a bunch of stuff from the 50s, uh, let's see, Maybelline by Chuck Berry, At the Hop by Danny and the Juniors, Book of Love by the Monotones, That'll Be the Day by Buddy Holly and the Crickets, and, uh, and Shake, Rattle, and Roll by Bill Haley and the Comets. So, uh, yes, basically all-time greatest hits of the 50s. And they also had Volume 2. And these were the only two volumes that I saw in that uh, series. But, uh, yeah, another great bunch of hits on that one. So, yeah. <clears throat> so now you can see why I was... Uh, I didn't want to let the rat poop scare me away from these records. There's some good stuff in here. Um, speaking of good stuff and some uh, classic stuff, Jose Feliciano. This is a self-titled album of his from 1980... 1980-nothing, because I don't see a date on here. I literally see no date on here anywhere. Oh, 1981. It's on the bottom of the sleeve in very, very tiny letters. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, got some good uh, stuff on here. Uh, some uh, Motown and classic stuff he covers on here. Uh, I Second That Emotion, the Smokey Robinson song. Ain't That Peculiar, which was, I think, didn't Marvin Gaye make that one uh, famous? And... Uh, so, and there's a couple here that I can't read the uh, text. The color choice for the text just it kind of blends in here, unless it happens to be just be fading from age. But uh, <clears throat> I've always I've liked the first few Jose Feliciano records that I've heard thus far. So it's like whenever I find one, I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up. And another Feliciano, fantastic Feliciano, Feliciano fantastico. Anyway, uh, uh. Feliciano with, exis with existing pop music. No, with exciting pop music. Yay reading comprehension. 
Um, I love you for sentimental reasons. Um, you don't, you don't, oh, you know you don't want me, so why don't you leave me alone? <laughs> As I said, yay reading comprehension. <laughs> I don't know why I'm having trouble reading today. Uh, goody, goody, uh, nature boy, the, um, oh, what's his name? Harry Belafonte song. So, so yeah. And Bye Bye Blackbird closes out the album. So, good, good stuff. And a couple other ones. Um, these next two, the records are actually in pretty good shape, and they're good, uh, great scores on here. The jacket of this one is not in such great shape, but, uh, yeah, Pearl by Janis Joplin. Why not? I mean, honestly, almost nothing could stop me well, unless the record was in absolutely horrendous shape. Uh, but yeah, some, you know, significant ring wear. And the record looks like it'll play okay. I mean, all these, well, all, all of these, I hope, will play okay. But uh, the proof will be in the pudding. Or in this case, in the record player. And But this next one, just, this one, next one is probably my favorite score of the group. Because the record was in excellent condition. The jacket was absolutely covered with mildew, uh, but I gave it a good cleaning and it came out really nice. Eliminator by ZZ Top. Yes, I've I've had this on CD for a while, and uh, but now I was confident enough in the condition of the record that I'd gotten rid of the CD before even listening to this one. But yeah, this this was gray from all the mildew that was on it. So uh, yeah, that's what a good little good cleaning will do with some simple green or some other non-abrasive uh, cleaning product and a, a rag. The trick is don't soak the rag with it, just spray it lightly and don't spray the sleeve of the jacket, spray the rag and then wipe real good. And it comes up looking almost as good as new. So yes, I could probably get uh, fairly, fairly decent money for this record now, but I won't because I don't want to sell it because I wanted it. So yes, of course, uh, Sharp Dressed Man and Legs are on this album, as you saw just a minute ago. Probably my favorite score from the group, but I've still got one more to show you. Saturday Night Fever, the soundtrack. And there is, um, the person wrote on here, Heat Warp. So yes, it is a little bit warped. One of the records is a little bit warped from uh, exposure to heat. Don't know if it'll play or not, but we'll see. And if it doesn't play... As I said, I didn't lose a thing. I paid zero for this record. Uh, but yes, of course, this is basically a disco-era greatest hits. Uh, if you don't know the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack by now, uh, what have you been doing with your life, really? So anyway, <clears throat> that is the haul of uh, Rescue Records for this time. And all in one haul. Not bad, huh? I do have, <clears throat> I, I've gotten a handful of Rescue Records um, all this time that I have not been recording and presenting Rescue Records to you. I have been obtaining some Rescue uh, Records. I was checking the time. Here, that's why I had my hand there. Um, that I will probably show you before the year is out. Uh, I want to, maybe in a, a year-end wrap-up of Rescue Records, I'll just show you some of the better finds that I found over the course of the year on the freebie shelf at House of Records. But for now, that'll do it for this episode of Rescue Records. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.